Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and we are continuing our consumer arithmetic series today by looking at government allowances. And a government allowance, you might be wondering, what on earth is that? Well, in our society, the government is the body of um, people that are voted in at an election who are responsible for um, using the taxes that they charge us to pay for things like schools, roads, hospitals, airports, etc. Now, one of the things that they also do is help people that are less fortunate in society who are unable to provide an income for themselves that's beyond the poverty line. So obviously, our government doesn't want Australians to be living in poverty so that they what they do is they provide um, supplements or extras to their income so that they're able to live and survive. Now, we have quite a lot of people in our society who do um, rely on the government as a source of income or even their only source of income. There's lots of different kinds and the names do change depending on which politician is currently the prime minister. So we've got a range of these. These are just some of the ones that we have. These are the ones that are most common and you'll probably see in your textbooks. So we've got the youth allowance. And we're gonna use our worked example on the youth allowance today. The age pension is available to people over a certain age who have retired and are no longer working and perhaps their superannuation doesn't really support them to be living well. So the government gives them what's called the age pension. We also have something called Job Seeker, which is an unemployment benefit. Used to be called New Start Allowance until COVID hit and then the name changed. So as you can see, the names do change over time. We've got something called Ofstudy, which is available to students who are studying at, typically at university and it allows them to have their university fees um, covered or their extra living expenses covered as part of that. Parenting payments are paid typically to single parents. We've also got family allowance that is paid to families who don't earn over a certain amount of money and need some support in, in providing for their families. We've got the disability supplement for people that are young, but also disability supplements for older people as well. And something that else that might interest you if you're planning on studying full-time at university is HELP, which is a way that the government enables you to defer your university fees to a later date. Um, so you don't pay them now. You basically incur a student debt it's called a help debt and you'll pay that off later out of your taxes so it's important to be aware of these different kinds of allowances particularly if you're writing a PSMT because you need to know what um, the person in your scenario for example if you're doing an assignment on budgeting what kind of allowances are available to them. Typically, your teacher will have set up a PSMT for you that will require you to do a bit of deep diving into this. So, um, and the reason for that is it's the kind of an, a bit of an awkward thing to put into an exam. A lot of people don't include this in exams. So that's why it's often used in the PSMTs. Now, if you're going to attract a government allowance, they're only available to you under some very strict circumstances. And if you lie about these circumstances when you're applying for them, or even if you make mistakes, you'll end up with a debt and you'll have to pay interest on that debt. So that's not fun. So you wanna make sure that when you're setting up these allowances that you get them right. Now, the strict circumstances include things like your age, and we're gonna see that with the youth allowance, you have to be a certain age to qualify for it. Your assets, so assets are things that you own. So if you're applying, for example, for um, some of these things, the government will Will want you to do a deep dive into your finances and outline to them what your house is worth, what your car is worth, what your furniture is worth, how much you have in the bank, what any other personal effects are that you have, any investments that you have. So they want to know everything about you before they give you money. And they also want to know your income. So typically you need to report to the government um, if you're getting these types of allowances and you need to report usually online once a fortnight typically or perhaps um, less frequently and tell them how much you earned over that period and then they'll make adjustments to how much they pay you depending on how much you've earned elsewhere. They want it to be fair for everybody so they don't want people to cheat the system and to be doing the wrong thing they want to make sure everybody gets the amount that they deserve. Now the amounts do change every year. So in this particular example I'm going to be using a table that was taken in early 2022 chances are it's changed already because we're now in a new tax year. So every tax year, these will change depending on the government's big budget for the country. So you're not expected to memorize the tables, but you do need to know how to use them. If you do have a government allowance question in an exam, your teacher should provide you with the table for you to read off. However, if you're doing a PSMT, the expectation is, is that you're not going to use your textbook where the tables might be a few years old, that you're going to use 
the government websites to actually source the tables for yourself. So finding these on the websites can be a little bit tricky and I would put the link the link to the different pages in the actual um, group chat on our uh, YouTube video but the problem is is that those links do change over time depending on where the government stores those and I don't have any control over their website so you'll have to do a little bit of a deep dive yourself and see if you can find the links to these but if you know what they look like then you know what you're looking for. So we're going to do an example today with youth allowance. Let's talk a little bit about what youth allowance is. So it's paid to full-time students and so not part-time, full-time students or apprentices. Now typically apprentices are working on the job and then studying part-time so that's a bit of a difference there but the age cutoff is from 16 to 24 so if you have a question where you've got a 30 year old then you know they're not qualifying for youth allowance. Your parents' income, if you're living at home, needs to be below a certain threshold. So a threshold is like a ceiling or an amount that it has to be below that in order for you to qualify for a youth allowance. If you're living at a home and not with your parents, then that's different. And there are maximums you're paid depending on your circumstances. So if you go to work and have a part-time job, the government's going to reduce that maximum amount. So let's say that the maximum you could possibly get with youth allowance, no matter how much you earn is $1,000, then that is going to come down each time you go to work and work at your part-time job. And that's to keep it fair for everybody so that some people that might be working at a great job where they're getting paid bonuses and tips and things like that, it wouldn't be fair for that person to get the $1,000 a week and somebody else who's working at a fast food joint on the minimum wage to get the same amount. That wouldn't be right. So the government wants to keep it equitable for everybody. So let's look at our example now. We've got a full-time student, so they, they fit that qualification for the youth allowance. They're age 19, so they're between 16 and 24. They also fit the second qualification. In this case, they're single. They're living away from home and earning $300 a week. You might be thinking, well, that's a lot of information. Why do I need to know where they're living? Well, that's quite important. Let's have a look at the table. Now, this is the table you're going to be looking for when you go online to find this for your PSMT. And notice here it says this is a guide only. Now, what that means is, is that in real life, what you actually get paid could actually differ slightly. It obviously won't be more it could be less. Now I know this from personal experience at one point in my life I was a single parent and I used to jump onto the computer and I, they have online calculators where you can type all your information in and it gives you an estimate of what you're going to be paid. Now at that particular point in my life I was looking to go and rent a house so I need to know how much the government was going to supplement my income so that I could work out how much I could afford to rent. Well unfortunately when the time came and I started getting the parenting payment, it was actually less than what the calculator online had said. It didn't seem very fair. It wasn't less by a huge amount, but it was still less. And that was a bit of a disappointment. So that's what they have on here. It's a guide only. Okay, now we're going to take this information and that could be actually a limitation on a PSMT. Just thinking of that one there. Just keep that one in mind. Okay, so looking here, we know they're full time and age 19, so they qualify for the youth allowance. But here's some important information. They're single. So that means they could fall into this category, this category, this category, this category, or this category. So there's quite a few different ones to choose from depending on your circumstances. And obviously couples can qualify for the youth allowance too. Okay, they're living away from home. So this one here is living at parents' house. So that's not this person. Living away from parents' house, not this person. Living at parents' house. And here we go, 18 or older. This one's younger than 18, so that's out. So we've got to find the right circumstance for the person. So they're single with no kids, 18 or older. So this one's 19, that fits the situation. Needs to live away from parents' home. So that's this person here. So we're going to check that box. Now that is the maximum fortnightly payment. So that's the most you're going to get in two weeks. So we're going to keep that in our mind now and work out how much that's going to reduce based on the fact that they're working and earning $300 a week. So this is the most you can earn, but when you start going out with a part-time job and adding to that income, it's going to come down and reduce. So now let's have a look at this table. This is the second table you're going to want to look for online as well. So once again, we need to find our person in this table. So this one here, living at home, not them, living at home, not them, uh, living away. 
So this is our row now. You'll notice if I flick back, there's more options there for the circumstances with the maximums, but it doesn't quite match up. There's actually less circumstances here. So you've got to find it again in the table. Okay, now firstly, what we need to do here is work out how much they're earning in a fortnight because we know they're earning 300 in a week. So our maximum we can earn is $530.40. And the fortnightly pay is going to be the weekly pay times two, which is going to be $600 a fortnight. So now we read across the top of the table. Here we go. If we earn between $452 and $552 a fortnight, that's not the right column because we're earning $600, more than $542 a fortnight. So this is the column we're interested in. And this column over here tells us the most you can earn. And if you earn this amount, you're going to get nothing from the government. So after this point, you get zero. So if we found our circumstance here, it was single, no kids, living at home, no, we're in single, no children, not and living at home, no, living away. So we're actually in this third column down here. And we look at this last column, we're earning less than $1,362. So that's okay. We're not in that column. We know we're not in that column. So we're actually in this column right here. So that's going to be the one we're interested in. Now, let's have a look at what that's telling us. It's telling us that the most we can get is $530.40. We can see that in red on the screen. And we're going to reduce the $530.40 um, by $43.50. So we're going to take $43.50 away from the $530. We're also going to take $0.60 cents out of every dollar. Now, $0.60, cents, and there's $0.100 cents in a dollar. So $0.60 cents in a dollar is 0.6 or 60% of a dollar is taken away for every dollar that's over $542. So let's work out out of this $600 here, how much um, is over $542? That's our first step. And we've got $58 is over that $542. So this is kind of a little bit complicated. You're going to want to think this one through very carefully. So let's just go back a step. And so we can see here for every dollar over 542. So that's what we've got to work out first. So we're not going to have a massive reduction because it's only $58 that's over $542. And you'll notice in this whole column here, the 542 is there. Now the tricky bit is in this column, it's 452. The five and the four flip around. So don't get confused and transpose your numbers by accident like I did when I was preparing this PowerPoint. Okay, so that's our first step. We know that we're going to be affecting that $58. So our 60 cent reduction is going to be 60 cents in every dollar or 60% is going to reduce. So 60% of 58 is 0.6 times 58. And that means we're going to reduce what we earn by $34.80. So that's this bit here. But we've got to add the 43.50. That's coming off as well because it's 43 plus 60 cents in the dollar. So what we're actually going to be doing is working out our youth allowance is going to be that maximum. Take away the 60% reduction on the $58. Take away that $43.50. So we've got two calculations to do here. That's why it's a little bit tricky. And then we're going to work out we're going to get $452.10 per fortnight. That's the youth allowance. Now, the total income, obviously, we're going to add that $600 that they've earned a fortnight as well. So they're sitting on $1,052.10 total for the fortnight of their income that they're earning part time as well as their youth allowance. So that's how we work out a youth allowance. All of the other different types of allowances have very similar tables to this. They're going to have the maximum table that you're going to need to look for first and then the reduction table, how much it reduces by. It could be a little tricky to find these on the websites, as I mentioned. So you'll have to be familiar with that so you don't waste too much time when you're preparing your PSMT. Well, I hope you found this particular video helpful. And if you did, why not consider telling someone? You could share the video with a friend on social media or with your teacher. You could tell us in the comments or even send us an email to let us know that you found it helpful. Or you could like and subscribe to the channel just so that you can find future helpful videos for your upcoming studies. And if you've got any questions at all, I would recommend the comments, I know it's quick and easy, but it's not a great place. It's really hard sometimes for me to explain maths in such a small space. It's much easier if I can do that for you over email. So there's my email address, mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook, so you can follow there as well. And if you wanted to ask questions there in the private messages. Well, thank you so much for watching again today. I hope you're finding this consumer arithmetic series very helpful and I hope you have a wonderful day.